but also uh, I guess it would be good to have everyone in this talk about this. Um, we've had a lot of really interesting topics today and really interesting discussion. Uh, what things that stick out to me are that the karma evolves to having the right view, not being too attached to the specific outcome of what you're trying to do, and interdependence. Uh, there's something in my mind that is very absent from this, uh, which is precepts. And at least in my practice and from what I understand of uh, uh, DDM teachings, uh, precepts are a big thing to have and really important to help guide us in our daily lives. And so I, I don't think that it was uh, intentional omission. It's just that how things happen, nobody happened to mention it. So I was just wondering if you could speak to how that relates to maybe coping with social change or trying to instigate social change. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Yes, precepts, very important. Um, the way, uh, very often we encounter teaching of precepts as sort of, uh, for example, the five precepts. They were very specific uh, teachings about how to conduct ourselves in relation to others in different areas of our lives. And they are really all different ways of uh, practicing to make sure that we, uh, our actions are in accordance with wisdom and compassion. And so like, when I refer to that, that's really what I was referring to. A lot of that very specific, like not killing or not stealing, um, uh, uh, no sexual misconduct, um, in various situations when we find ourselves in a certain a sort of situation, do we um, do we choose to continue the existing cultural practice of um, ignoring the person who is who is defined as uh, as as an outsider by our racist uh, culture? That would be which precept would you cite from? Um, or it's like a list of the, the list of hundreds of reasons. Like, you know what? Like, he's standing in accordance with compassion. No. So then, um, then we see clearly that that wouldn't be the, the right action to do. And um, so I think when we are able to broaden our understanding and practice of precepts by looking at it as more time, our thoughts, our speech, our behavior, our actions, uh, our responses, the interactions, whether I think and uh, discern clearly whether it's in that accordance with wisdom and compassion, whether it generates a uh, suffering for others and for ourselves, um, then we are actually practicing upward uh, 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 persons. Yeah. 
asking to let go of it. So now he's completely devoid of all these memories, layer by layer by layer. He's actually completely up. Now at the bottom level, after getting rid of all these memories, so there is the person who's standing in front of you. Okay? Now you want to teach him about society. Okay? So how will you teach him about society without using any concepts, without using any perceptual mechanisms? Okay, nothing. He has to somehow realize the society. That there is something called society existing. There is one thing what we can do is actually because Buddha said we, we talked about the processes, skandhas and you know, the processes, but he, Buddha never said there is an individual there. So we have processes there. Okay? So these processes somehow we have to figure out that there are some other processes around. Or maybe there are no other processes, but only these processes are there. So all I'm asking you is that please answer my question without involving any concepts that we know. Who <coughs> are you asking this question? All the five speakers. So um, I'm not the moderator, but I thought this is a session for asking the question about how to talk. So I don't think we could raise time for that. Uh, what I'm not able to understand is the purpose of this thought experiments. Uh, why do we want to have someone eliminate all their history and ideas uh, and, and, and try to teach them? Uh, but that's what we've done when we were born. Uh, when we were born and, uh, as a baby and we started to become, go through the process of socialization, we started with acquired languages by learning that, oh, this is and uh, so that's yes, we do start. Uh, we do need to start with uh, acquiring uh, language and, uh, and, and concept, and that's how we learn about things and acquire ideas. Um, so I'm not quite sure what what what, that, but like I think others were trying to maybe we can talk about this. I'm not quite sure where we are going. Uh, talking about eliminating people's history. Ideas. Uh, use the word "let you go." Um, the, uh, you're referring to uh, the notion of letting go in uh, our in our practice. That's not what we're talking about anyway. We're not talking about forgetting uh, anything that you have learned, uh, forgetting your history. Uh, that's not what we are talking about. We are talking. Uh, we are acknowledging uh, the reality of our of our being that. We What's in our minds coming together of all the uh, causes and conditions that includes our upbringing, our uh, cultural conditioning, uh, and, so, uh, and so on and so forth. And the practice is to cultivate clear awareness of all these processes and how we come to the person we are right now and see the emptiness of this and, uh, and how we can, uh, how this is co created moment in our life in society. So, um, sure. uh, yes, thank you. This is and maybe this combined with the question, the topic is still better than the main and better than the speech. Hello, hi. Um, thank you, Dr. Lee, for the um, presentation. And please allow me to spend a little bit of time for uh, talking about the context leading to my question. So the context is uh, just yesterday um, we were told at work space we were told there is a co-worker went through um, just recently went through a gender transformation and uh, we had our studio manager to talk to us about this openly. Well, the per the the person the co-worker wasn't there. Um, the person is going to come back uh, next week. So we were openly talking about the um, manager trying to educate us like this is happening. And I think we 
have come a long way. Everybody seems pretty okay with it. And we're openly talking about it. Um, one of the questions came up was, um, someone was asking, what's, hap what's going to happen with the bathroom situation? And that leads to my question that, uh, well, at work, it, luckily there's a single stall. So the manager said, oh, the person is going to be using a single stall until we solve the situation. And that leads to my question is, um, we sometimes see this um, social movement we, there are a lot of people like being overly protective of the minority group or they're kind of being aggressive towards some people having questions about of course people are going to have questions but it seems like the more aggressive social justice is attacking the other side but to me it feels like um, what you just talked about is more about inclusion, not division. So if we're giving them a special treatment, is it kind of feel like it's more making a division instead of inclusion? Would that create more problem? I just like to ask what's your view on the um, like uh, overprotectiveness of the minority group? Thank you. Thank you. Um, this reflects a lot of mentality that there's out there. And um, so you use the term overprotect, overprotectiveness. So uh, it's a matter of uh, perspective that what we use. This reminds me of um, the time uh, when I was learning how to scuba dive. Uh, so uh, when I was uh, learning how to scuba dive, the one very important rule is that we use a buddy system. We always um, scuba dive with another person. And, um, the person who can swim or uh, move faster um, always, always should go with the pace of the person who moved the slowest. Usually that was me. Oh, wow, like my, my, my dad is in 
hundred. Now it's there. But we don't have to start from scratch. So um, I don't think I can address your, 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 your question. Uh, so there's sort of this um, practice of uh, learning to open our, our mind that can assess everyone. And, 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 uh, and even those uh, people who need that we are not aware of, the, the, the willingness to say, yeah, you know, they, they too are one of us human beings. We want to make it possible for them to be here. That that's, that's another example of a whole process of uh, engaging action in accordance with compassion. Thank you. So, uh, just by the way, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to have everybody come up here and join me while That's the move you're making. But I think it's, uh, I think it's, it is important to think about what the kind of internet and uh, texting age might be doing to our brains. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Maybe I should say mine. Because we're really attuned to, you know, quick little things that are happening in our environment. And for hundreds of thousands of years, we needed to, to know like, what is out there I need to chase or run from. And so now we're in this constant state of kind of agitation, chasing after things, and running from things. And, and uh, you know, so I think it creates a sort of bee in a, in a jar effect. You know, our minds are sort of like bees in the jar. And it's all a superficial level of agitation. And uh, so that is, I think, a, 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 one of the reasons why people do sort of gravitate towards meditation and mindfulness as a, a way to alleviate this uncomfortable feeling that they don't even necessarily know why they have. But I think this is a part of it.